Hey kids, welcome to Unit 3, Lesson 7, Polymorphism, Exercise Number 4. We have another Choose Your Own Adventure. I'm going to be sticking to my theme of B and go to a bank account. Let's go ahead and get started. The bank account class represents a bank account that has instance variables for the customer's name and starting balance. The basic account class represents a basic bank account. The basic account class overrides the withdraw method to charge a $30 fee if a withdraw causes an account to be overdrawn, it means the balance is negative. In bank.java, we're going to write the get account info method to traverse the bank account array. We're going to withdraw $300 from each account, return a string containing each customer's name and new balance using the get name get balance methods. In my console Java, we're going to create a bank account array containing the bank account objects. Finally, we're going to instantiate a bank object with the bank account array, we'll then call the get accounts info method and print the results. That doesn't sound too bad. Let's take a look at our code. In my console, looks like we're instantiating four objects here from the bank account class. These look like my accounts. We have a bunch of names and numbers here under bank account. Looks like we're creating two private instance variables, customer name and balance. Our constructor is pointing to those are private instance variables. We have a deposit method that's getting the balance and adding any amount we put into it. We have a withdraw method that's the balance and that's subtracting the amount from it. Then we can get the customer name and get the customer balance. Under basic account, we're extending bank account, so we're getting those methods. Our constructor here is customer name and balance, and that's getting the customer name and balance from bank account. That's very important. We're going to note that in a minute. We have another withdraw method here. It is passing amount. Amount is the balance from our previous class bank account. And if our balance is less than zero, we're going to add 30 to that amount. And that's how we get a negative number with a positive number here. Let's look at bank. This is new. We have private bank account accounts. Let's take a look at this graphic here. You can see bank account consists of two parameters, the customer name and balance. That means when we create this private array accounts, bank accounts really is customer name and balance being passed along to accounts. So the accounts variable here really has two parameters that come along with it, the name and the balance. Keep that in mind. That's a pretty neat thing we're going to continue to use throughout this course. Here is my constructor bank. It takes the private instance array from above bank accounts accounts. We have a get accounts that returns accounts. And this looks like where we have to do our coding. We have to traverse the bank account array and withdraw 300 from each account and then concatenate the customer's name and balance for each account to the results. And that's actually not too bad. They gave us most of what we need here. We already have our method, get accounts info. It's creating a string results, which is empty, and we're going to return those same results. Well, what we want to do is we want to traverse through that bank account array that we created earlier. And remember, it has two different components, both the amount and the customer name. That means as we loop through, we can just call the account withdraw method we already have and add to it. And because we're just changing one part, it's not going to affect the customer name. We can then call the name of that customer, which isn't going to change, and get their new balance. How are we going to write this out? Well, we need to traverse, so we need a for loop, some parentheses, and our curly cues. We want to do an enhanced for loop. In our anatomy for enhanced for loop, we need a data type, a variable to hold it, 
and then the array we're looking through. And our data type kids, it's not a string, it's not an int or a double, it's actually a string and a double. And if you remember, we really have all this wrapped up in our bank account object. That means we can just use bank account as our data type. And we're gonna give it a variable name. I'll just call it account or colon. And then what array are we looking through? The array is still called accounts. Our data type is the customer name and the balance. That means now we're gonna loop through both the customer name and balance. We wanna change the balance, right? We wanna withdraw 300 from everybody. And we're gonna do that from the variable we created up here. We're looping through at each one, in each one of those, we wanna withdraw $300. So I'm gonna go from my account, I'm gonna call the withdraw method, and I wanna withdraw $300 from everyone's account. Then I wanna return that with the customer's name and balance for each of the results. So that means my results, whoop, just result. We could do equal results plus, or our shorthand plus equal, and we have to get the customer's name. So that is account, which is the array we just created from above. We're going to get the get name method and we're gonna concatenate and say new balance. And we're gonna concatenate and then get the accounts, get balance method. And we don't want all the customers on the same line. So let's do another concatenation. Inside here, we can do our escape character and don't forget your semicolon. Clean up our code here a little. This is our end of class. What's our method doing again? Well, we're creating a string results. It's empty. We're doing an enhanced for loop to look through all of our accounts. And instead of a string, an int, or a double, because our bank account really consists of a customer name and balance, we're using bank account for the data type. We still create a variable to store this, and we're still looking through the accounts array. Under our new variable that is looking through each of the elements under accounts, we are calling the withdraw method from basic account. And we know if it ends up being overdrawn, we're gonna add $30 to this amount. We're returning results and we need that to be a string. So we're going to, at each index, we're gonna get the customer name, and their new balance. Maybe we should try spelling that right though, kids. We're gonna do an escape character end to get to the next line, rinse and repeat to the end of our accounts. Well, that's just part one. We still have to do part two. Let's head over to my console. We have to create a bank account array containing the bank account objects. Well, these are our bank account objects. We have to create an array to do that. Again, my bank account consists of two things, customer name and balance. I'm going to use that as my data type again. Bank account, this is an array, and let's just call this account list, and this is going to be equal to, we're going to do an initializer list, and we're just going to put my arrays from above. First, second, third, fourth. Check our spellings on this one, kids. Looks pretty good. That creates an array of our arrays. Now we're gonna instantiate a bank object with a bank account array, and then call the get accounts info method and print the results. Again, that's not too bad. Instantiate a bank object. That is from the bank class. We'll call it my bank, be equal to a new bank. What is our parameters we're gonna put in? Well, it's gonna be our account list from above. Then we wanna print that off. Let's go to system.out.println. And inside here, we just wanna use the my bank to call that method we wrote, get accounts info. 
Now, when I hit run, I should get Shaquilla $200, Ali negative 130, Valentine negative 230, Maria should have 500. Might want to check my math on that, kids. Let's hit run and see. Oh, we got an error. Looks like we got one too many C's in there, kids. Let's clear that, run it again. I want you to notice, Valentine doesn't look like it's printing off correctly, but Al E is. If we take a look up here, if we switch around Valentine to basic account, which has access to that overdraft, then we're going to get that negative 230. Let's give that a try and see. Let's go ahead and run. Now we're getting our negative 230. This is an excellent reminder to be careful of which class you're calling something from and what constructor you're using. Scope and access, kids. Key takeaway is really understanding this graphic right here. When we create that private bank account accounts, what bank account is, is still a data type, but this data type consists of the customer name at the index and the balance at index. That means when we used our enhanced for loop, we didn't need to call a string or double. That's because our accounts is really made up of two separate types. And this is something we're really gonna use through the remainder of this course. And if you look at my graphic, I color coded it so you could see where these variables are being created, stored, and how they're all wrapped up together. Finally, kids, remember, you only have access from the class that you created and it extended from and the constructor from which that class was called from. Bank account does not have access to our withdraw method here. Only basic account does. So you have to call from the basic account constructor. And that's what we had to do here in order to get the right amount to print down there. This lesson was really a great example of polymorphism and a pretty tough one, kids. I am fairly confident you're going to see these concepts come back through the rest of this course. Hopefully this video helped you understand polymorphism a little better. As always, kids, if you have some questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next lesson. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.